classical music. It's actually quite beautiful. And as a lover of music, I actually really enjoy classical. But classical music is not the reason I'm making this video and talking to you. Nor is this re video really about HDSDR, which is a program I've yet to ever do a video about. I want to do a quick explanation about FM channels, FM stations. And that's going to lead into what we're doing, which if you already read the video description, you already know. But the amazing thing about FM is that, like most transmissions, you can have what's called subcarriers. You can have additional signals embedded within your main signal that allow you to do various things. Like with television, it allowed video and audio to be transmitted in the same signal, and breaking that down, the the color information was a subcarrier of the, the main video signal and all that. You have that with FM. In fact, the most famous thing everybody knows is FM stereo. FM stereo is essentially a subcarrier on the main FM signal. You have your first 15 kilohertz of audio, you have a pilot tone which indicates stereo activity, and then at 38 kilohertz into the signal, you have an amplitude modulated difference signal, and of course, when you add a when you do the the quote unquote math between the signals, you you can extract the stereo information. It's basically left plus right and left minus right. Left plus right being the sum, which modulates the base FM signal, and the difference, which modulates the subcarrier and that's all, you know, audio matrixing, mid-side matrix is what they also call it. But you can also have additional carriers, like here's RDS, the radio data system, that's an additional carrier. But you also used to have SCA carriers, and I don't remember what SCA stands for offhand, and I'm not going to stop this video. This is probably the fourth take I've done. I really don't feel like stopping it. And looking it up to explain it. So I'm just going to have to put a description on what it is. But these were auxiliary carriers that FM stations could use for internal purposes. Or most commonly at one point they actually carried commercial free music uh, for Muzak. Uh, the point is it's an entire extra audio signal that is not easy to pick up. Your normal FM radio won't do it. You generally need to have an SCA receiver to do it. I started wondering when I got my SDR set up, could I do this with SDR? And I figured among all the programs I tried, there'd be something out there that would have an SCA mode. Well, no. I can get FM, I can get FM stereo, but I could not find anything to do SCA. But the great thing is, there are ways around it. Um, one of the gr interesting things about the FM broadcast signal is you can, believe it or not, you can generate an MPX stereo signal in software. Um, there's a program out there called Stereo Tool, which will do this. If you have a 192 kilohertz capable sound card, it will actually generate an audio signal that contains 15 kilohertz of audio, a 19 kilohertz carrier, and then it will create an amplitude modulated version of a difference carrier. And it can do it all in audio, um, or at least do it in software and output it as an audio signal. And then you simply take this audio signal that it generates, you feed it into a, a basic FM transmitter. You could do it with like even one of those Mr. Microphones. And provided it doesn't have you know, filtering on the input, if you remove it so it doesn't limit the audio bandwidth into it, it will take the, it will basically be able to um, generate an MPX stereo transmitter from a mono transmitter, because essentially that's all FM transmitters are. There's FM transmitters and they don't really, they transmit stereo by basically adding a subcarrier and, or a couple of sub, well, pilot tone and another subcarrier. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're not even listening to HDSDR. 
No, we're listening to SDR Sharp. <laughs> SDR Sharp is being fed the demodulated baseband from HD SDR into 192 kilohertz virtual audio cable. This virtual audio cable is then sent sending the information into SDR Sharp, uh, which is evidenced by you know source other sound cards. And now. I'm sure you probably sat there and saw USB and you're wondering why are you in USB mode. The reason I'm in USB mode is because we're not getting RF data. This is actually raw audio data. Uh, if you put this into an audio editor, you would see on the spectrum, you would see the exact same information. The only thing SDR Sharp allows us to do is quote unquote tune within the spectrum. And you have most everything I went over and HD SDR and the HD SDR IF waterfall. Here's our main audio. Here's our 19 kilohertz stereo pilot. Here is our 38 kilohertz subcarrier for stereo. And here's RDS. But here's the great thing. Here is the SCA carrier, the other audio program. Uh, the station I'm tuned to is 90.9 WETA out of Washington, D.C., not exactly a big famous station. They are one of the few stations in this region that's putting out 75,000 watts. Um, they're, they're grandfathered because I'm in region one, so we're not allowed to have anything more than 50,000 watts. But this is a 75,000 watt station. And of course, as you noticed, when the announcer started talking, we lost, you know, the stereo information went away. There's no stereo information there. What I want to talk about is this guy over here. This is the SCA carrier sitting right next to the RDS carrier. And I knew in theory all I had to do was figure out how to get the baseband audio into SDR Sharp. The biggest problem with that was the fact that SDR Sharp will not give you a bandwidth of more than 32 kilohertz or 16 kilohertz for a single sideband. You can, you can fudge it and try to make it higher, but it doesn't work. Unfortunately, you need to have about 150 kilohertz of IF bandwidth in order to see the SCA. Um, the problem was solved, obviously, by HDSDR because it doesn't have, I don't even know if it does FM stereo or not, uh, but it doesn't filter the output. I can set it to 192 kilohertz. It doesn't filter it, whereas SDR Sharp wouldn't go 192 kilohertz with virtual audio cable, and if you click on wideband FM mode, it filters the audio at 16 kilohertz, and you don't get all this information. So the question you're wondering is, does it work? I, it is, it's, it's amazing. Check this out. Let's turn the volume back up. And actually, let me take you on a little tour of what we've got here. So this is the this is the first 16 kilohertz. This is the main frequency modulated program. As we go up here in frequency at 19 kilohertz, which you won't hear it, I have to probably have to go down one more. Here we go. That is the MPX pilot tone. It sits right at 19 kilohertz. Up here at 38, this is the difference. This is actually the the, the side of a mid side matrix. This is the stereo portion of it. Um, it is noisy because you don't have as much power in your subcarriers as you do your main program. Plus, this is amplitude modulated, so you're going to get all your kinds of noise. So here's the cool thing. I'm going to switch over into narrowband FM mode because that's what this thing runs at. And I'm going to go ahead and click this up to 76. Whoops. Or maybe 67, I'm sorry. I am dyslexic. I want to turn AGC on. Turn the volume up. Turn some more volume up here. That is the SCA signal that WETA puts out. Um, 
It's narrowband FM signal apparently. I thought it may have I thought it would have been dual sideband, but it's apparently it's just it's narrowband FM. Um I'm not really sure if this is gonna be of any use because most of the times all you hear on these SCAs are alternative programming that's not mainstream or other things that aren't meant for mainstream consumption. But when I got into SDR, one of my thoughts was there has to be a way to be able to decode the SCA carrier and to be able to hear some of that stuff we're not supposed to. That's part of the thing I reason I got into radio in the first place was I always felt, at least for me, I always felt that listening to a station a thousand miles away was almost like I was listening to something I wasn't supposed to be listening to. And as you got into it, you would find the, these signals hidden around and and really, this just gets right at the thrill of radio. This is, this is not a signal for general public consumption. It generally requires specialized hardware to listen to, but yet with just a little bit of a funky configuration, I'm actually able to listen to it. Um, I haven't found any more in my area. I don't get very good FM down here. I could probably understand this station a little bit better if I had better signal, but um, it's now something I can look for. I know how to identify them now in um, in SDR Sharp, and I keep HDSDR installed on this computer, and, and that will be one of the few reasons I actually use that program over, um, over SDR Sharp, because SDR Sharp has done everything for me. But yeah, I know I, I really went a roundabout way just to sit here and click on a carrier and show you, but I'm just, you know, I don't know. I, I got really excited about this because I guess I know a little bit about how, how FM works as far as a signal generation standpoint, and I just got really excited. Like I said, this is not a signal that, you know, is for, this is not a general consumption signal. This is a signal designed for special purposes and a special audience and you know here it is with just my computer and some software I'm able to listen to it so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and um and get out of here I wasted enough of your time probably you're probably sitting here even more confused about it um but I'll, I'll, I'll throw some links up with some additional information about what SCAs are and what they stand for and and maybe if you read about about them a little bit, you'll you might gather just how exciting this was for me. So anyway, hey guys, don't forget to check out the blog. I'll put a copy of the URL since I apparently can't directly link to external resources through YouTube. Um, and I'll I'll make sure I put it in the description. And uh, you're probably going to see this on the blog as well i'll definitely be blogging about this because you guys have no idea as excited as i was waiting for my sdr setup to show up i've been sitting around for a couple of weeks looking for better information on how to do sca and i finally just kind of sat down and played around and figured it out so you all have a good time i'm gonna sit here and try to get better reception and see what they're actually talking about on here and i'm also gonna look around and Check out some other local FM stations to see who else is running SCA carriers, because I'm sure they're not the only one. So, hey guys, take it easy and have a good night.